Hey everyone, Micah here from ebikeschool.com, and today I want to talk to you about some big news in the world of electric mobility. Now, just a few minutes ago, New, which is a leading electric scooter company, unveiled two new electric vehicles, an electric motorcycle and a three-wheeled electric scooter. I covered both of these in an article for Electric, so if you haven't seen that news yet, definitely go read that article and I'll put a link to it in the description below this video. But the reason I want to talk to you guys about this today is because I think this is going to have a huge impact on the electric motorcycle industry and by extension, the entire electric mobility industry. The first vehicle is the new RQI GT. This is the electric motorcycle and it features 100 mile per hour top speed, which is about 160 kilometers per hour. It's got 80 miles of range or about 130 uh, kilometers, a 30 kilowatt motor, that's about 40 horsepower, and a 6.5 kilowatt hour battery. And that battery is actually divided into two 3.25 kilowatt hour removable batteries. So the second vehicle that New unveiled is the TQI GT. And this is something of a electric scooter. It's a three-wheeler, so it's self-balancing. And we don't know as many details about this one, but we basically know that it has a 50 mile per hour top speed, which is about 80 kilometers, and that it has an 80 mile range, and that's about 130 kilometers. So these are the two new vehicles that New has unveiled this year, the motorcycle and the scooter. I think the motorcycle is probably the more interesting one to me, though they both have a lot of interesting features, and I think they're both pretty important. Now when it comes to the electric motorcycle here, there's uh, a few things to keep in mind. First of all, this is definitely an urban electric motorcycle still. Yes, it can hit 100 miles per hour, but this is designed for a commuter purpose. So this is an urban, suburban type motorcycle. This is not a sport bike, this is not a uh, race bike, this is not a touring bike. So you do have to sort of curb your expectations. This is very much a commuter bike. But I do think that that is incredibly important because there aren't a lot of options on the market right now for good commuter electric motorcycles. And I think that this new electric motorcycle presents two big game changers. And these are the two things I want to talk about this bike. The first is that it can do what other urban electric motorcycles cannot do. And the second is that it could usher in a new era of affordable electric motorcycles. Now let's talk about both of those points and we'll start with what this bike can do. Now I'm a big fan of urban electric motorcycles. I've ridden a few of them. I spent uh, a lot of time on the CSC City Slicker. This is a great bike, but it's only limited to 45 miles an hour. So when you have a bike that goes those speeds, you're really limited to the city. You could do a bit of suburban riding, but once you get onto any roads that are posted 45 miles an hour, you know that people are going to be doing 55 miles an hour there and a bike like this just can't keep up. There are a few options for bikes in this class, you know, the Suron also goes about 45, and there are some other of these light, you know, sort of 50cc-ish style bikes out there, and they just don't have the speed or the power to get you out of the city and onto highways. And so what is really interesting about the new RQI GT electric motorcycle is that it has that 100 mile per hour top speed. So that means that any interstate, any highway, any road you take to work, is probably going to be appropriate for this motorcycle. And I can't tell you how many times that I've met people that have said, you know, I'd really love to switch to one of these urban electric motorcycles. The only problem is that I've got, you know, like a five mile section of my commute that goes on the highway, or maybe it's a 10 mile or a one mile section. It could be a, you know, a short section, but if you have any highway travel at all, that's gonna rule out pretty much all of the uh, electric scooters and the urban electric motorcycles that are available in the US. So the fact that the new RQI GT can hit those speeds is a big game changer. Now, of course, the bike does have a smaller battery capacity. Six and a half kilowatt hours is not much. They rate the bike for 80 miles of range, but that's probably at mixed city highway riding, um, you know, probably doing an average of like maybe 40, 45 miles an hour. So if you're doing just highway riding, I'd guess you'd probably see somewhere around maybe 30 to 35 miles. And I know there are gonna be people in the comments below this video saying, hey, 30, 35 mile range bike, that's trash, you know, this is a joke. But you have to keep in mind what this bike is designed for. This is not a highway only bike, this is not a sport bike. What this is, is a urban or suburban commuter bike that has the ability to go on highways and interstates for short periods. And in that way, I think this is a huge game changer because it opens so many doors for commuters to finally get on a bike like this. And speaking of opening doors, that brings me to the second point I wanted to discuss on why this bike could be a game changer. And that is that I believe it could usher in this new era of affordable electric motorcycles. 
Now we don't know anything about what the bike is going to cost yet, so unfortunately I can't give you a number. But if we look at New's history, New sits in this interesting sort of mid-range level of pricing. They produce premium electric scooters, you know, these are not cheap, um, you know, low-tech, low-cost scooters. These are very nice scooters. But this is a Chinese company, so they get to take the benefits of the shorter supply chain for all these components, the lower labor costs, the lower R&D costs. Everything costs less when you're developing these things in China. And so that means that when the vehicles are then brought over to the West, the prices can be more reasonable. If you look at another electric motorcycle company that has uh, similar specs, though not quite the same, and is also a Chinese company, uh, let's take a look at Evoke. So Evoke Motorcycles has the Urban uh, series of motorcycle. This does something like 80 miles an hour. It's got a little bit higher capacity battery. I think it's in the high sevens, like 7.8 kilowatt hour. So it's, it's more than the 6.5 kilowatt hour of the new RQI GT. Uh, but essentially it's in a similar uh, power, speed, and weight class. And this bike costs around $8,000. And I don't see any reason why New's bike should cost more than this, because New just has a huge size advantage when it comes to production, development, sourcing, all of these things that New already does well because they're selling hundreds of thousands of scooters already. So I would be very surprised to see this bike retail in the U.S. for anything more than 8, and I think it could be substantially lower. If you look at the vehicles New already has in the U.S., their M series, I think it's the M Plus Sport, costs uh, somewhere around 2800 if I'm not mistaken, and the uh, NGT costs something like uh, four and a half, I want to say, maybe 4000 um, but I'll have to look that up and put that on the screen. So we're looking at obviously smaller vehicles, you know, news electric scooters don't compare in the power or the uh, speed level of the electric motorcycle, but we're already talking about much lower prices than you see for some of these European electric scooters that cost, uh, you know, one and a half to two times what news electric scooters cost. Next, if you compare prices to electric motorcycles that are available in the U.S., I think the, the best bike to compare the uh, new RQI GT to is probably the Zero FXS. Both of these are street bikes, both of them have uh, highway capable speeds. The FXS is 85 mile an hour top speed versus the new RQI GT's 100 mile per hour top speed. They have similar battery capacities, 7.2 kilowatt hours for the FXS, 6.5 kilowatt hours for the uh, RQI GT. But if you look at the price, the FXS is it's, it's inexpensive compared to what we have in the U.S., but it's still an expensive bike at about $11,000. And if you want to get the version of the FXS with two removable batteries, which would be equivalent to the uh, two removable batteries on the new motorcycle, then you're looking at another 1000 bucks. So you're talking about $12,000 versus what I estimate to be an under $8,000 bike from new and potentially significantly less. So when you compare what new could come into the market with in terms of pricing, we could be looking at an entirely new era of affordable electric bikes. And again, some of this is speculation because we don't know what the pricing is yet. It could be the new comes in and says ours is, you know, ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000 too. But I don't see that happening because of the advantages they have on pricing and because of the scale of production that they're already doing. Next, I want to touch on the TQI GT. This is the second vehicle that New unveiled, and this is a slower model than their motorcycle. It only goes 50 miles an hour, but that's still faster than pretty much every electric scooter available in the US, so this is still potentially a game changer. Obviously, you're not going to be taking it on highways or interstates, but for a suburban commuter vehicle, this could be perfect. I mean, how many people are going more than 50 miles an hour in the city or in the suburbs? Probably not that many. The other thing that's interesting about this vehicle is that because it's self-balancing, it could be a lot more approachable to people that wouldn't normally consider themselves motorcycle people. So there could be a lot of you guys that are watching this thinking, you know, that motorcycle looks interesting, but I'm not really a biker kind of guy, like that's not what I ride. But you might look at that TQI GT and think, huh, that's interesting. I mean, it's kind of like an e-bike, but it's easier to balance and it, it only goes 50 miles an hour, so it's not like I'm going to be driving 100 miles an hour into a wall on this thing or off a cliff if I lose control of it. And uh, yeah, you know, maybe I could see myself on something like that. 
So I think that's sort of the point of this vehicle, is to make it more approachable and something that people that wouldn't normally consider themselves uh, motorcyclists might be interested in. The other thing is that with that covered top, it's also going to be really good for rainy areas, like in the Northeast or the Pacific Northwest where you get tons of rain and there are people that want to be able to switch to an electric motorcycle or a bike, but they just don't really have great riding weather. So obviously this is not going to keep you completely dry, but it's going to be a lot nicer than just riding a standard motorcycle or scooter because you do have that covered top. Now, like I said at the beginning, between the two vehicles here, the uh, motorcycle RQI GT and the three-wheeled scooter, the TQI GT, I'm probably more interested personally in the motorcycle, just because that's closer to the kind of things that I ride. But that uh, covered electric scooter does seem really interesting. I have ridden some three-wheelers before, and they can be kind of nice. You know, when you come to a red light, you don't have to put your feet down. Uh, they feel more stable sometimes at low speeds where you don't have to worry about, you know, sort of um, waddling with the bike or, or putting a foot down every now and again when you're doing slow speed maneuvers. So they could be really interesting. I'm really looking forward to testing these things out as soon as there are test models available. I'll hopefully be doing reviews for Electrek, so definitely be watching out for those. But both of these vehicles I find incredibly interesting for the market just because of the potential they provide. These are brand new vehicles coming into a new market that is used to higher prices and they could really be a big shift. I think potentially the beginning of a new era of affordable electric motorcycles and higher speed electric scooters. It's a little too soon to tell for sure because we don't know what the pricing is, but based on what New has been able to do with their production and pricing in the past, I think we're looking at the potential for some very interesting price points that could have a big impact on moving people towards electric mobility solutions. All right, so that's all I've got for you today. Thank you guys for listening to me ramble on about a topic that I find interesting. I hope you guys found that at least a little bit interesting too. If you stayed this long into the video, then I'm guessing that's probably the case. So thanks for hanging out with me. And last but not least, before we go, it's time to choose the randomly selected commenter that's the winner of the giveaway for my last video. And the winner is... Hundiente. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from my DIY Lithium Batteries book, or my DIY Solar Power book, or a book on building your own electric bicycle, or on electric motorcycles. And anyone else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment below this video. You can say anything you want, you know, you can let me know what you think about these bikes, or you can just say, hey, how's it going? And hopefully you will be chosen as the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And anybody who wants one of my books, but doesn't want to wait that long to win the giveaway, you can always find my books on Amazon. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.